Roman here, owner of the Basement Fitness Center in Holy FBA. Um, a couple questions I was asked is how to perform the hex bar deadlift here and the sumo deadlift. And in today's episode, I wanted to show you guys how to do those and perform them safely. So let's check it out. All right, so here's the hex bar. And then for any of you guys who have never performed this lift before, obviously we're going to want to step inside the hex bar. And then from here, you can see our handles are to the side. And in some hex bars, you have the handles that are parallel with the trap bar or they're raised up. Doesn't really matter, but the biggest thing is we're gonna want our foot centered with the center part of the handle. And then from here, we're gonna take a descent, just like a squat, okay? So my knees will come forward. Now we don't wanna like go so far forward that your heels come up off of the ground. But you know, feet nice and flat still, and then hips break back. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grip the side handles here, and you can see how they're centered at the arch of my foot, my balance point, shoulders over top of the handles, and then from here I'm just going to push into the floor and then pick the weight straight up just like that. I mean, it's very simple. And then from here, you want to ride the bar back down just the way you picked it up. All right, guys, so now I wanted to just show you the same positions from the front view but from the side. So when we line up, okay, we want our feet lined up with the handles and the balance point. So basically this is the center of the bar. We want it in line with the arch of your foot. So that's our balance point. Then from here, you know, the same descent, okay? Knees just above the toes, hips down and back, nice athletic position, and then once again, push through the floor, flat feet, and then just stand straight up. Then from there, make sure you guys ride the bar straight back down, just the way you went up. Also making sure your shoulders and arms are in alignment. It is natural to have your shoulders slightly in front of the handles, but we don't, want, we don't want them drastically over top of the hands and the handles. Okay, so now to answer some of the questions you guys may have out there, what are the pros and cons to doing a trap bar deadlift versus your normal conventional deadlift? Now, with a trap bar, you're going to see this a lot more in like a high school football environment because it is safer. It's going to keep your athlete in a safer position. The bar is not over top of his body or her, and it's not creating leverage against the lumbar. So it's going to help prevent back injury and any other injury. But if I were to compare the two, I would say the conventional deadlift is more functional and it's going to have a better transfer to the football field, the baseball field, court, whatever it may be. But for any of you guys out there who have never deadlifted before, this might be an option that you might want to do or try first just because it is safer, help build that base up, and then from there you can start trying new things depending on what your goals may be. All right, you guys, so here to set up for the sumo deadlift, you guys have probably have already seen it. Now, it's a very, very wide stance. Now, you're gonna have to play around with your flexibility, so it's basically the hip mobility, on how wide your foot stance should be. Now, me being a taller lifter, this isn't ideal for me, only because I'm gonna be sitting a lot lower. But anytime I train the sumo, I like to set up my shins right to the ring, and you can see the ring on the bar here and I want them just about touching, my toes will be pointed out. So you don't want them pointed forward, but at the same time, we don't want them completely pointed out like this. So kind of almost like a nice, really wide squat stance. And then from here, your knees will go up over the toes. That's normal, we just don't want them way past the toes. And then we want our hips way down and back, shoulders over the bar. So just like so, we're gonna set up here, arms, straight down from the shoulders, then from here I'm gonna push into the platform and ride the bar straight up my thighs, just like so. And then we wanna descend just the way we went up with the bar. All right guys, I'm gonna show you here from the side with the sumo deadlift, we're gonna set up just like I showed you. Okay, so shins lined up to the ring. Now, I wanna show you guys the side view so you can see how low and how deep my hips are gonna be going, and then how far forward my knees are gonna go. We still want shoulders over top of the bar, and not, now, once again, they will be over the bar just a little bit, but we don't want them obnoxiously over the bar. So I'm gonna set up, okay? Hips down and back. You can see I'm almost in like a full squat position here, but at the same time, you know, just being a taller lifter, it's gonna be like that. Arms, shoulder width apart, and then from here, what I'm gonna do, same thing. I'm gonna push to the floor, and I'm gonna pull straight up. So push, pull straight up the shins, hips locked up, good posture. Ride the bar straight down, just the way we lifted the weight. All right, guys, so the question you might want to ask here is, what, how's the sumo deadlift going to benefit you? And then, once again, I'll backtrack to the conventional deadlift. I think that that's going to be better for an athletic standpoint. Why we do the sumo deadlift? 
One, it depends on biomechanics, but it's more of a powerlifting movement. It's how much weight can I pick up off the ground but efficiently, and having our super wide stance is going to make it more efficient, and you're going to realize the bar path is going to be much shorter. So that's why they, you do the sumo deadlift more in competition. Now for most of you taller athletes out there, it doesn't really benefit you, especially if you're going to be in a complete squat position. You have a further bar path, so that's where the conventional comes in. We have longer leverages, so really the conventional deadlift is going to benefit you more. Now, um, for any of you guys out there who are looking for maybe a different exercise and stuff to work the quads, the glutes, the back, you know, sumo is good. I do it myself, you know, just to switch things up and work different muscle groups. All right, guys, so today we went over the hex bar deadlift and the sumo deadlift. Uh, once again, to touch base on the hex bar here and why we like to do it, it is a safer movement. The bar is neutral to your body. It's not pulling you forward. It's not creating any leverages against your back. So it is a much safer exercise to perform. That's why we like to use it for younger athletes or maybe some beginners and stuff in the gym. Touching base on the sumo deadlift. Why we do it is to be able to lift as much weight as humanly possible. That's why you see it more commonly used in powerlifting meets. And once again, should you sumo deadlift, should you conventional, it depends on your biomechanics. Like I said, if you're a taller lifter, conventional is the way to go. Being a shorter lifter, sumo is probably the way to go. You'll be able to create more leverage on the bar that way and shorten your range of motion from there. And if you guys have any other questions about the deadlift or maybe how to improve upon them, please feel free. You can message me on my uh, any one of my pages or even comment below on a YouTube video here, and then we'll try to address those next week.